program is brought to you by realestate.com.au, Australia's number one address in property. With more properties for sale than anywhere else, we make it easier. Welcome back. There are just over 2,000 homes scheduled to be auctioned this week as vendor confidence continues to recover. New South Wales will hold 794 auctions with 123 of them in regional areas. Victoria will hold 826 auctions with most of them in Melbourne. Queensland will hold 238 auctions with about half of them in regional areas. South Australia will hold 89 auctions with virtually all of them in Adelaide. Western Australia, Tasmania and the Northern Territory will hold 19 auctions between them and the ACT will hold 61 auctions. Take a look at the most viewed properties going to auction this weekend and the top property in New South Wales is located at 34 Wallalong Crescent, West Pimble. This large four-bedroom family home has a price guide of $2.25 million. Most viewed property in Queensland is 50 Dilgara Street, Tugan. This property is only partially renovated so it will need a fair bit of work before you can move in. The top property in the ACT is 28 Gellert Street in Wright. This newly built home is located 20 minutes west of the Canberra CBD. The top property in Victoria is number 10 McKeon Avenue, Pasco Vale South. This 1950s style home is on the market for the first time in 70 years. Price guide is $1.25 to $1.35 million. And the top property in South Australia is 24 Wyfield Street, Wattle Park. This giant five bedder sits on more than 2,200 square metres and is just 15 minutes from the Adelaide CBD. Price guide for this one, $1.1 million. And the most viewed property on the REA Group website this week is 56 Daintree Road, Cornubia, which is in the far southern suburbs of Brisbane. This home sits on two acres. Uh, the ad says the home is trying to capture the romance and glamour of the Hamptons. This giant home has seven bedrooms, six with en-suites, multiple living rooms, a huge kitchen, self-equipped guest wing, cinema room and underground car park for up to 12 vehicles. It's also got a gym, butler's kitchen, four fireplaces, hair salon and three metre high ceilings. Outside, there are two magnesium swimming pools, a swimming machine, pizza oven, four-person yoga sauna and a horse stable. It's also got 30 CCTV cameras, water tanks and solar power. You'll need to contact the agent to inspect this one. Property company REA Group reported a 1% increase in revenue during the recent financial year to $1.2 billion. Net profit was down 9% to $372 million, reflecting the tougher economic environment. I caught up with REA Group Chief Executive Owen Wilson a little earlier and started by asking him about how the buying and selling conditions are currently holding up in the tougher market. Actually, the property market is incredibly healthy at the moment. Um, and we see that in a few ways. We see listings starting to come back into the market. Um, July listings were down 5%. But interestingly, within that, uh, Melbourne and Sydney listings were up 9%. So it shows the market is starting to recover. We're also seeing it um, in the level of buyer interest at the moment. We track this via buyer inquiry. And buyer inquiry has been increasing since May. Uh, and it is up well uh, ahead of um, COVID le pre-COVID levels. Looking at your results, costs are up 7% in the past 12 months. So how challenging has it been keeping those costs down? Yeah, when the market started to soften uh, towards the second half of last calendar year, um, we took cost action. We reduced our investment. We paired back our costs in Australia. We only had 1% cost growth in Australia, which is very pleasing. Uh, given we are a growth business. The rest of the cost growth was in our very uh, successful Indian business uh, where we're continuing to invest. Uh, we've been the number one business in India for over 18 months now. They grew revenue 46% um, and that's where we saw most of the cost investment uh, there in uh, FY23. You're described as Australia's number one address in property. Can you just explain to the viewers the full extent of the REA Group business? Because some people might not be aware just how diversified you actually are. We do have a number of businesses. I mean, our, our flagship business is realestate.com.au, which is our residential uh, business for buying and selling and renting properties. Um, to put that in perspective, we get 12 million Australians visiting our site every month and over half of those visit our site exclusively. We run at about 120 to 125 million visits per month. But we also have the number one commercial business in Australia with realcommercial.com.au. And interestingly this year, the, our highest growth business, albeit it's, it's a small one, was flatmates.com.au, which is the number one share accommodation. 
We also cover new developments. Um, we have a data business in PropTrack, which has the most accurate valuation uh, model in Australia. And we have Mortgage Choice, um, which is the number one broking business uh, in Australia. Yeah, so is the ideal situation a customer can look up property data on PropTrack and then find a property on your website and then buy it using a broker through Mortgage Choice? That's right. Um, we, we give um, owners the opportunity to track their property on realestate.com.au. We provide them with a new valuation each month. We've gone through over 3.5 million owners now track their property on our site and track the valuation of their property. This prompts them to take action. We then have the ability to connect them with an agent if they want to take action on their property. Um, and also obviously through our mortgage broking, we can provide the finance as well. I guess the only thing left is being a real estate agency business yourselves. Is there any ambition to go into that space in the future? None whatsoever. Uh, I can tell you um, we're very happy with what we do, which is to connect uh, consumers with our, our customers, the agents. Um, we're going to leave them to do what they do. They do a great job um, for their vendors and, and we don't have any intention to enter that space. You mentioned India earlier. Just how successful has the REA India business been over the past 12 months? It looks like you must be investing a lot of money over there. Oh, we're really pleased. The Indian market is incredibly attractive. Now, it's in very early days in terms of the move to digital. Uh, but the business there has been a, an incredible success since we first invested. When we invested, it was the number three site in the country. It's now the clear number one in terms of audience. It's the clear number one in terms of revenue growth. And we're very pleased with our position there. It grew revenue 46% this financial year. It's still loss making at this point in time, but we're very confident over the long term, this is gonna be a great investment for REA shareholders. Yeah, and what sort of audience web traffic numbers do you get in India compared to Australia? They're still a, 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 they're actually larger. So we, we get about 12 million people per month come to our site. India's tracking at about 20 million, um, which seems an incredible number. But, you know, in a country of 1.3 billion people, we think that will grow uh, substantially from here. Um, but it is a, it's very much like Australia. You know, uh, middle class Indians see property as a way to grow wealth. So it's a very property obsessed country, a bit like Australia. Um, and a lot of the, the learnings that we've done, learned in Australia from our business here can be transported across to India. And then what other international markets are you expanding in? We, uh, we have a 17% 17 per stake, 17 stake excuse me, in Property Guru in Southeast Asia. It's the clear number one uh, business in uh, property portals in Singapore, Malaysia, Vietnam and Thailand. And we also have a 20% uh, interest in Move, which operates Realtor.com in the US, one of the leading um, property sites there. OK, looking ahead to this current financial year, what's the outlook feeling like for you? Are you feeling confident at the moment as a chief executive? Uh, look, it's definitely going to be better than FY23. Um, and FY23 market wasn't bad. The problem is we were comparing it to FY22, which was a very hot market. We saw a lot of volume post-COVID coming to the market uh, last year. And so the comparison looks bad. I think this year is going to be what I'd call a lot more normal. If you, you, know, if you track listings at the moment against the six year average, they're running at about that. And therefore, I think we're going to see a, probably a flat listings market, um, you know, slight negative in Q, Q1. But then in Q2 this year, we're cycling over the weakest market last year in 23 years. So we expect that to be quite positive and then probably flat in the second half. So it's, it's a good market. If you put a house on the market now, you will sell it. There are buyers there. If you want to get finance, the banks are lending. So that is, they are very healthy conditions and we've got continued population growth, which is going to fuel that demand. Yeah, it feels like commentary from the Reserve Bank seems to suggest that interest rates are now at their peak but may stay here for a while. But is that now giving confidence to both buyers and sellers that rates probably aren't going to go any higher? I think most consumers would, would think that um, we are, you can see the, the peak of the cycle. Whether we get another one or another two, I think most uh, people would say that would be it. And I think that confidence that it's not going to go up, say, three, four or five percent from here um, is giving consumers confidence to act. And we are seeing that in the listing, listing numbers. Owen Wilson, Chief Executive at REA Group, thanks for your time today. Thanks for your time, Ed.